Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video, we're talking about whatever happened to conditioning in bodybuilding. The last video I made was about Brandon being compared to the 90s bodybuilders, and what I noticed the most was the difference in conditioning. 90s bodybuilders were way more conditioned than bodybuilders of today. So it got me thinking, and I have a couple of ideas that I wanted to share with you in this video. So I want to take, for example, Luke Sando right here. Look, Sando is one of the biggest guys of today, and he's also one of the youngest bodybuilders of the Mr. Olympia. He turned pro only recently, and he has the size. He is a huge bodybuilder, and his problem has always been his conditioning. Now, at the Arnold Classic 2019, Arnold Classic Ohio, he was conditioned. He was conditioned. He wasn't super conditioned like crazy, but he was conditioned. He was conditioned enough. Good enough to place third in a pretty competitive lineup, beating guys like Rowley, Steve Kuklo, and many others. Arnold Classic Ohio was truly an upset, nobody really expected Luke to do so well to place third in such a competitive lineup. But later on in the Indy Pro and Australia, Arnold Classic Australia, he was, well, let's just say soft. He was very, very soft once again. Then later, at the Tampa Pro, he was pretty hard. He wasn't super conditioned like he was at the Arnold, but he was pretty hard, he was good. Then again later at the Mr. Olympia, he was big, but basically there was zero conditioning, zero definition, no muscle visible on that body. Just a big blob of muscle and water, he doesn't look anything like he should be looking on a stage, he looks like he's in the off-season at the Mr. Olympia. I heard him saying in a video on Trained by JP subscription website, where he said that it's not easy for a guy big as him to get dry. But how was Dorian able to get completely shredded to the bone every single time when he competed at Mr. Olympia? Every single year he was super conditioned, he was diced, and he was also huge, probably even bigger than Luke. How was Ronnie Coleman able to do it, who was definitely bigger than Luke? How was Phil Heath able to do it, Sean Roden, and many, many others? So the size, really, being big is not really a problem. If you diet hard enough and long enough, you will lose the fat and the water, of course. So what I'm thinking, the reason, the real reason why these guys are not conditioned enough is the fact that they're trying to keep their fullness by not dieting extremely enough and by doing those peak week protocols. So Dorian Yates said that he never did any kind of peak week protocols. He would be completely shredded and dry and ready for the stage as at least two weeks out. And he would never try to do any last minute type of protocols to try to get dry and dehydrated in the last minute. But then you have Ronnie Coleman, who has always been doing those kind of protocols. You can listen to Chad Nichols talking about it. And their winning recipe actually was that apple pie syrup. Ronnie Coleman would literally drink a bunch of that and he would get full as hell in the last minute. Now, I'm sure also Jay Cutler would do that kind of stuff with Chris Cicero. I'm sure Phil Heath has been doing that kind of stuff. And they were actually very full and very conditioned at the same time. Dorian Yates was always very conditioned and he was huge, but he never really had that fullness. But he was probably more detailed. He had more striations and he had a drier, more grainy type of look if you know what I mean. Now, that was also partly genetic, but you cannot say that Dorian wasn't dieting hard enough and that he was never really trying to risk everything just to be a little bit fuller. He was always trying to be as conditioned as possible and with all the mass he had being the biggest guy in the 90s, the fullness really wasn't the priority for him. He was already bigger than all of them. What was important for him to win the show was conditioning. He would just have to come conditioned and he would beat everybody. Now, going back to Luke Sando, judging by his previous performance, you might say that they figured out his winning formula. When I say they, I mean him and his coach, Chris Asito. You would say that they figured it out at the Arnold Classic Ohio. But then later, they messed it up again at the Indy Pro and at the Australia Pro. Then again at the Tampa Pro, he was dry again, but at the Mr. Olympia, he was not. So, imagine if he was only simply dieting a little bit longer for the Mr. Olympia if he didn't do any kind of protocols to try to come fuller, would Patrick Moore be able to beat him? I do not think so. I do not think so. I think Patrick simply beat him because he was more conditioned and he was significantly smaller. 
Patrick was beaten by many much bigger but <laughs> way, way less conditioned guys like Akeem Williams for example who was just a huge blob of muscle but there was no striations especially to the back while you had Patrick Moore who was deeply separated and conditioned. So if you take all the competitions from 2019 into consideration that Luke Sandow did, you can say that uh, he had some success, but he had some failures. But how would he do if he was simply just dieting super hard and if he didn't care so much about the fullness and keeping the size? If he came just a little bit smaller but always super conditioned like Dorian Yates? I think he would have more success overall and I think Mr. Olympia and all pro bodybuilding stages would just look much better if that happened. If every bodybuilder didn't care so much about being full and being bigger, if they were all actually focused on conditioning, like classic physique guys are doing right now. If they did that with their mass, overall bodybuilding would be just doing better. Because most bodybuilders miss their peak. At the Mr. Olympia, only a couple of them were actually conditioned and full. Most of them were off. Most of them were not conditioned enough. And that sucks. They are all playing the size game. Is that the problem with the judging criteria? Are the judges uh, awarding them the ones who are just bigger, not conditioned enough? I would say so. If judges were focused a little bit more on conditioning, bodybuilding would just do much, much better. I don't think it's a problem with uh, the competitors. I think it's a problem with judging. But then you get Steve Weinberger, the head judge of the IBB, saying that the top 5 at the Mr. Olympia were the most conditioned guys. Really? Rolly Winkler was the most conditioned guy? Come on. So I don't know what these guys are looking at or what they are saying. Are they awarding just the mass without any conditioning or are they really looking for conditioning but they don't really see it properly? I have no idea what is going on. But really, imagine if guys like Brandon Curry Steve Kuklo, Juan Morel, who look crazy conditioned, full and super vascular, only a week out of Mr. Olympia and then destroyed everything, messed it all up, because he was trying to do who knows what. He showed up flat and watery, not conditioned, not full, just a horrible, just a mess of physique. Imagine if these guys did that, Rolly Winkler as well. Imagine if Rolly was just focused on conditioning, if he never tried to be any fuller. Luke Sando, of course. Akeem Williams, maybe even Cedric McMillan, I'm pretty sure these guys are not that watery or fat or just simply unconditioned because they are too lazy to diet. I'm pretty sure they are dieting very very hard. But the reason why they are not conditioned is because they are trying to be big and full. One of the reasons why 90s are, in my opinion at least, the peak of bodybuilding is because the guys of the 90s had really good genetics, were really really well shaped. But there is another factor, and that is obviously conditioning. The guys in the 90s were pretty much always on. They really didn't have that many off years. Kevin Leveroni, at his first Mr. Olympia 1992, where he placed second after Dorian Yates, he was really, really conditioned. Smaller than usual, yeah, but very, very conditioned. Sean Ray, always conditioned. Flex Wheeler, maybe not so much in the later years, as well as Kevin Leveroni, but in their early years they were very, very conditioned. Nasser El Sambadi was a huge guy, but at his prime he was always conditioned. He would do those crazy protocols with insulin and, you know, carving up and all that, but he would diet down properly and he would not really risk it that much like these guys today. I'm still not sure why is this really happening. Is it simply the fact that they're not trying to lose their fullness? They're trying to keep the fullness as much as possible? Are they simply just lazy? Too lazy to diet hard? I'm pretty sure it's not insulin. Milos Sharchev is basically the person who introduced insulin into bodybuilding and he prepped guys like Dennis Fulf, who was actually known for his conditioning, he had Tada Yamagishi as well, himself, Nasser El Sambari, Dorian Yates used in 1997, Ronnie Coleman of course, and all of these guys were always ripped and some of them were actually very full, some of them weren't. But imagine if guys of today were always conditioned, if they didn't really care so much about peaking, but they were always consistent with their conditioning, which would truly be a beautiful thing for bodybuilding. But what do you guys think? What do you think is the reason why guys today are not conditioned enough? Is it because they are playing the size game, they are trying to be full and they lose the conditioning because of that? Are they really too lazy to diet? Or is it insulin? Or other drugs? 
whatever you think tell me down below in the comment section if you enjoyed this video like it and if you want to see more subscribe please subscribe guys all the best bye bye